Part 1. Spiritual. Chapter 1. Purpose. It's in my nature, as a man, to show up in the spaces I occupy, and in my family as a protector, as a person who is present, intentional, and mindful of the moves I make and the words I speak. Everything has meaning and place. Everything is a pillar or a key to something. It's essential for me to remember and acknowledge my truth as I grow and change. My purpose is ever-changing and unfolding, and a lot of people don't talk about that. There are many layers to who we are as people, and I find that to be true about the purpose or the many purposes we have in life. Standing steadfast in what I am here for and what I've been called to do serves as the foundation of my existence. It also offers clarity when I've been challenged in moments of reflection. What am I here for is a question that I ask myself when greeted with change or a moment of choice. I'm a creator, dancer, father, protector, and so much more. Each outlet is connected to my purpose. Being multifaceted is beautiful, and I feel the most grounded in a purpose-driven life when I tap into the different parts and passions of mine. Every decision that we make in life is linked to an outcome, good or bad, supportive of our journeys or hurtful. Knowing our purpose or having a curiosity about what it could be allows us to be flexible and continue to be students of life. So even when we make mistakes and don't get it right, There's room for us to lean in, get curious, and create an inner dialogue as we consider our behavior, talents, and lives as a whole. Knowing who we are, or at least getting curious about who we can be, plays a major role in who we end up being in this life. You're here for a reason. Share your gifts. Being clear about my purpose has shifted many things, like how I move through relationships, romance, fatherhood, and my career. After many years of reflection and growth, I've also come to realize that my purpose chose me. Long before I could imagine my calling, it was already written in the stars. It existed inside me, patiently waiting for me to take notice and say yes to it. I got signs along the way that would present themselves. A powerful lesson for me on my pathway to purpose has been understanding that at some point, to truly live fully, we have to be brave, fearless, and self-aware enough to recognize what is calling for our attention and care. We are required to take action as we explore what comes to the surface by being open to the possibility of being greater than we already are. What we answer to and how we show up in this life for those around us is directly linked to our life's work and what we're called to do. The work that we do for others is a direct reflection of the work we desire for ourselves. We are each other's mirror. When I realized that my existence on earth wasn't by accident, I could clearly see the benefit in how my actions and behavior affected those around me. My purpose has been the cornerstone to support the legacy that will remain long after I'm gone. In the face of adversity, conflict, or fear, being mindful about intentions, answering the calling of my heart's work, is proof that we'll get what we put out. Everything will come full circle in the end. Stay patient and connected to your truth. The art of creating is being able to accept the things that come toward you versus running away from them. Receiving what comes your way with open arms can speak to your energetic vibration. I am very in tune with energy, which means I can identify when things feel aligned and meant for me. When you are open to receiving, your vibration is high, you feel safe, you feel grounded, and you learn to pay attention to what is speaking for and through you. A high energetic vibration makes room for tapping into the lesson and information that you need to see your higher self. I've chosen to pay attention to the signs presented to me. Two signs continue to come up in my life. That my music affects people. It is central to some of their important memories and it can reflect an emotion they can't express on their own. And that my music creates a connection between myself and others. There is something spectacular about being connected to people I've never met through my music. One moment stands out clearly in my mind. Many years ago, before the internet and social media, when being on the radio was everything, I was doing an interview. This girl called in, excited to talk with me, and shared a story that I'll never forget. She told me that Icebox was her and her best friend's favorite song. That friend had passed away. She shared that they buried a picture of me with him and that those memories of the love for my music will forever be cherished, remembered, and appreciated. It was humbling to hear her recall this. 
It stopped me in my tracks and made me realize that music is the truest form of connection and love. From then on, I understood that I was a bridge in their experience by way of music, and many others carry similar experiences. It's moments like that that remind me of what I was put on this earth to do. It's moments like that one that will live in my heart forever and serve as a frequent reminder of the expansiveness of purpose and the power of music. When you recognize your purpose, you can fill your soul. A part of serving your soul is helping others. My work, this work, is purpose work. Even if I wanted to, there'd be no way to ignore the significance of showing up and taking the lead. If we allow ourselves to be open, we make space for receiving what is meant to be ours. Energy check. Purpose. What are you willing to struggle for? What activity makes you forget about the world around you? If you have a dream, could you bring it into reality? What's your motivation style? What gives meaning to your life? There were moments on this journey where I questioned if I could handle the responsibility of submitting to my purpose. Could I take it? What would I do in moments where the goodness of life seemed clouded? Could I accept it? The unknown proved to be frightening, but I wasn't willing to ignore it and not see what was in store for me. There will be mistakes made along the way. Self-discovery requires missteps. That's where the lessons are hidden. As humans, we fuck up. How we honor our process and right our wrongs is a part of the journey. There are so many things we don't have control over. Fear will sometimes present itself as an obstacle, and even still, our life's work and purpose will remain steadfast and waiting for us to move forward, scared or not. We have to overcome to grow. Doing things scared can be the fertile ground for immense growth and self-discovery. Letting fear be the ruler of our lives cannot be an option. We all know from experience that fear can and will hold us back and hostage if we let it. Being and staying committed to living an expansive life, no matter what tries to stop us, is how we build our muscles of resilience and perseverance. From a young age, I knew what I wanted. I wanted to be an entertainer and to creatively express myself through my art. I've been committed to my art since before I can remember. This commitment took me to the highest heights of the entertainment industry but it also tested my connection to my own inner voice because fame has a curious way of distracting you from what really matters. B2K had been together for four years and people had known Omarion, J-Boog, Raz B, and Fizz as a unit. When B2K broke up, it may have appeared to the outside world that my purpose was in jeopardy, but instead, parting ways prepared me for a new sense of self-belief living intentionally and being more open than ever to pave a new path for myself as a solo artist. It was a new beginning and a new chance to connect with my original purpose, being an entertainer. The first thing I needed to do was to expand my territory and extend my reach creatively, but that meant going for performing in front of tens of thousands of people to small crowds in nightclubs and intimate settings for royal families in faraway places. It was humbling. It felt like I was tired of the performance life, It took a lot out of me physically and emotionally. I was forced out of my comfort zone, and it was through discomfort that I started looking at my destiny as a musician and performer in a new way. I am always looking for more ways to grow and become better. That's the personality that I have. Being average isn't an option, and neither is quitting. I was committed to trusting my process and staying true to my intentions of touching hearts and changing lives with my music and message. These small actions built on themselves creating new ground for myself. I had to step back in order to move forward. This required a mental reset, refocusing and pivoting toward my next level. The most powerful moment I had during this period after many sleepless nights, show after show, was performing for the Aboriginal people in Australia in indigenous land. Going overseas to perform was always an adventure, and I mean that quite literally. When I stepped out of the car in Alice Springs, Australia, The brutal heat greeted me and nothing was what I was accustomed to. The crowd in the venue were small and unembellished with its four by eight stage and modest sound system. This was entirely new territory for me because I was in an unfamiliar place with otherwise unacceptable circumstances. I had to humble myself to experience it fully. A part of me wanted to not be there at all, but going home wasn't an option because in order to break new ground, I needed to get uncomfortable. There was a difference between being a star in the U.S. and an international star, and I had to remind myself of that. 
even if it meant that my first shows abroad weren't stadiums. My goal was to have my music touch as many people and as many hearts as possible. Yes, I was frustrated after getting out of the car and seeing what I had to work with because nothing was what I was used to back in the States, and rightfully so. It wasn't supposed to be the same. This was new territory for me, and regardless of the circumstance, this small group of people was looking for me to show up and perform. So I got myself together and did my job because no matter how big or small the crowd, my goal was to both affect and inspire others, even if it's just one person and to continue my own path of reinvention as an artist. Keeping this as my center enabled me to transform what it means to be an entertainer during this pivotal time in my life. Driving through the mountains in Australia to perform for people who were unfamiliar with me and vice versa was eye-opening to my true purpose. We didn't speak the same language, but we could all relate through music. It was a trip to see how far and deep the vibration of merely being human connected us. After the performance, I did a meet and greet for the small group of people I had just performed for. It was then that I learned what it truly meant to be bound by music. The ability to share new experiences, stories, and visions is what being alive is all about. We all need that. No matter how outside of my comfort zone I may have felt in the beginning, by the end, the purpose of the trip and the experience as a whole became very clear. Humans were created to connect. The status, success, and societal symbols of greatness do not make us who we are. They do not deepen our connections to those around us. This wisdom about what matters in life might sound obvious to some. Wise men have taught this for millennia, but practicing it is a different story. As someone who grew up on stage and in the media from a young age, I had a lot to unlearn about what makes me a person of value. By the time I went solo, I had a crash course in what my priorities were and how I defined success. Society likes to tell us how successful we are when really success is a perspective. I've had number ones, I've gotten plaques, I've been nominated for a Grammy, and in my reflection, all of that has made room for me to ask, what does this all mean? In truth, it's in the small moments and starting from the ground up moments that we genuinely find camaraderie and deep understanding for those around us. Accolades and acknowledgement are important to an extent, but there comes a time when life has to matter beyond the praise you receive. Life is about more than having influence and power. Your gifts weren't given to you for the sole purpose of being seen and accepted by the masses. No matter what they are, our talents are bridges for human connection to cross and meet in the middle, to create something for the world to be a better place. This speaks to something more extraordinary outside ourselves. It is a testament to divine purpose over profit. That is the real influence. Being taken away from my audience in the States and thrust into foreign territory taught me to expand and mature as a performer and genuinely anchor into being open to new experiences. It was during this time after B2K ended and I launched my solo career that I also deepened the spiritual path I was on. My Nana taught my brother and I at an early age how to connect with spirit. The first thing I started doing differently was praying. Then I started practicing gratitude and being present with what was around me and in front of me. My goal was to become freer in my life and more connected with my creativity. All these things play a part in what I was able to achieve during this evolution. By finding centeredness, I found my authentic and creative voice. In the music business, it means something to have awards, be on lists and get plaques. And while those things are nice milestone moments, they don't make me great. Staying responsible for my success and the imprint I leave on the world is what makes my greatness not only expansive, but authentic and aligned with the highest good of my life. Artists can get tricked into thinking that we aren't valuable if the crowds aren't filling arenas, if the records aren't selling, or if our music isn't streaming by the millions if we aren't topping the charts. That is a dangerous mirage that can swallow a person whole and manipulate the true purpose at hand. And when I was thousands of miles away from home in a tiny Australian town that I never knew existed, the truth, my truth, became even more evident. No matter your life walk, we all have moments of feeling displaced and lost. You can uncover your purpose no matter who you are or where you come from. The road to success is long. It requires failures and missteps because it is there that we learn what lessons to take with us as we continue to press forward. When you're curious about your purpose, when your intentions are transparent, open, and honest, 
They will link up. You become a force that no one can stop. My goal has always been to change the world as an artist by inspiring people with my music. That small town in Australia opened up a new pathway to a deeper meaning for me. I walked away with a more explicit connection to what it means to live guided by what I was called to do in this life. I'm constantly reminded that I'm a thinker and I'm also someone who enjoys life's everyday things. Reflecting on my time in Australia is a beautiful reminder of the blessings that I'm able to experience every day. Some people forget that I am a human being, not just a celebrity who gets things done for them. I do my own grocery shopping and pump my own gas, but because of how the world sees famous people, it's almost like folks expect me to live up to a certain worldly projection. No one looked at me in that way when I was overseas, and it was refreshing. I was able to show up and do my job without the extra stuff attached. When I think about living my purpose, I grow more and more aware that I'm being met with other people's perspectives and perceptions. Through all that I have to stay grounded in who I am and what I've been chosen to do while on this planet. Being a celebrity meant that I risked losing sight of my own inner voice and motivations early in my career. But my experiences in going solo helped me to stay close to my inner truth. I experienced the gift of tapping into my first passion for artistic projects and into a newfound interest in truth seeking for a long time after this period. My purpose started when I was performing in the living room as a young kid. Creativity was my driving force, yet my purpose has continued to transform in my life with the various responsibilities of what it means to be a man. Today I live two different lives, a public life that I consider my job and a regular family guy life that offers me the time and space to take care of my business as a man moving through the world with a family and other responsibilities. Living in my purpose has put me in a position to see others' perspectives and perceptions, whether or not I understand or can relate. I think that purpose has a way of shifting your perspective. In all that I do in life, I like to be intentional. I feel that I am most effective no matter where I am and what I am doing. My mom having me at 16 really informed who I was growing up. She was a child having a child, but even with that being true, we got to grow up together in a cool way. My mom poured herself into me as a child and she played a significant role in molding me into who I am today. She told me I could be whoever and whatever I wanted to be. I think that her being young and ambitious herself played a significant role in that messaging. My relationship with my mom was very different from the relationships I saw my friends having with their parents. I remember my mom being such a go-getter and hard worker, no matter what obstacles presented themselves. She wasn't quitting or giving up. She was a hairstylist when I was growing up. She did everyone's hair from executives to folks singing in God's property with Kirk Franklin. I was around for all of it, always in the mix. My brother and I were always on set at shoots, witnessing our mother stand in her purpose without fear. When I really look back on my purpose, it was being cultivated at a young age. I was already in a position to shape my gift. I never felt the pressure to become anything because being creative and great was already being led by an example. It didn't matter if I wanted to dance, sing, or play basketball. Whatever I said I wanted to do, my mom facilitated it. That support was the breeding ground for my purpose of being what it is today. Another critical thing that nurtured my purpose as a protector was growing up around my Nana. She kept us close to our culture and identity. I remember going to an event back in the day called the African Marketplace. It was at the high school my mom went to, Dorsey High. I also filmed my first national commercial there, so there was a great synergy and sense of belonging when we would go. Being around that type of energy helped nurture my creativity. I grew up with the community, immediate and extended family all around, so I was always supported and encouraged to be myself. It was a blessing to never feel the pressure of transforming into what I was destined to be. I just became, and that was a beautiful offering from my family. Now more than ever, I see the gift in realizing that so many different and diverse people have grown up with me. So many people stand alongside me at work, starting in the living room up until now. The growth is all exciting and interesting. It never gets old. When you're walking in your purpose, this is almost always the case. The journey is constantly beautiful and challenging. Many things keep shifting in the relationship I have with my family. My mom was a kid having kids, so when I came of age, I decided that I would be the man of the house and my purpose took on a new role, be the provider that my mom never had. My dad was incarcerated most of my childhood. Therefore, I didn't have consistent examples of what it meant to be a man. Along the way, I learned on my own how to define manhood. 
Everything I do is a reflection of my family and family is everything to me. It comes before my celebrity or any outward projections that the world may want for Omarion. To my family, I am Omari. As I grow closer to who I am, the dynamic of my family evolves. I think it always will. I think that's what is so beautiful about having a close-knit family. We all take turns being a type of example for one another. I am the first one in my family to transform into who I am today as a person. Because of who I am professionally, I can help people, which also feeds my destiny and gives drive to my purpose. No one knew this was going to happen. My aim continues to grow with my family because I'm the firstborn. My Nana taught me a lot about who I am and my family. She set the tone for almost everything I know. As she grows older, my brother, my cousins, and I are taking on more responsibility. We're keeping the family together like Nana taught us how. From organizing family functions and get-togethers to planning family events, we are stepping into our positions and contributing to the family as a whole. We're also developing a more profound understanding of what it means for us to keep our family intact. When I was young in my career, these tasks weren't on my mind. I wanted to go hard for myself early on, but in hindsight, it was to go hard for my family, especially my kids. I wasn't thinking about seeing or spending time with Nana in this way. Time and age have changed that completely. And since having kids, I've become even more in tune with how vital legacy and purpose are. As a young rising star, I wasn't thinking about taking my kids to see their Nana. Those responsibilities didn't exist. I love this new life and a new way of moving through the world. I enjoy it because you get what you give to people and what you want to get in return. I have the energy and awareness now to put that intentional energy forward. It feels good and I see that it helps. It supports my family, our health, and our commitment to each other. We all influence each other in such a positive way. So my purpose continues to grow with more responsibility and more information. It's really cool and such an honor. Purpose starts with the intention to take on the task at hand. Uncovering the why of the passion we hold for something is vital. Once you figure out why you're doing something, you can discover and color in the rest. But I think that it's crucial that you're intentional. Sometimes people get hung up on that word, but our intentions don't have to be deep. We can set intentions for the most simple tasks like going to the grocery store to buy healthy ingredients to make a purposeful meal, or we can create intentions around waking up early before our work starts to do that passion project we've been dreaming about. Purpose and intention go hand in hand. They feed each other and make us more mindful about what we want to set out to do, how we want to live our lives. We want a particular outcome, but we can become distracted and confused if we don't set the tone for getting there. At the end of the day, purpose requires looking at all the moving parts in front of us. The impact you have starts with building confidence and being consistent. If you do something long enough or put yourself on a schedule, you will transform and get better. It doesn't matter what you do, you could do anything. If you do it over and over and over again, you'll get good at it. Certain things you have to stick with for a really long time to get good at. Dedication is necessary. That's where patience kicks in and fuels both the intention set and the purpose that's driving you. Don't get discouraged if you feel like you're at something for a long time. Time builds empires. When I look at my career, I see longevity in all facets. My purpose is the foundation that's carried me all these years. I've stood on this way of thinking for as long as I can remember. Throughout all my transitions, through all my peaks and valleys, I am still ready. Standing on my intention to keep being greater, grounded, and filled with gratitude for the journey has supported my purpose. Just because I live an intentional life aligned with my purpose in no way means I don't get tripped up by life. The goal is to always get back up anytime I fall. There were many times in my career where I thought, okay, is this it? In those moments, I reminded myself that anything could happen and change. Dealing with record labels is tricky. If the label decides to support and invest in you, your experience could be fantastic. If not, that's a whole new story that isn't favorable most of the time. Being signed can make or break a career. It's an interesting game to be in. When there were moments of doubt for me, I had to shift my purpose as I knew it for the better. I've had to transform and continue growing with time. When I sit down and think about how far I've come in my career, I am reminded that when you put your art into the universe, it talks back to you. It sticks to people. 
As an artist, I've become etched into the lives of so many people. I regularly think about that conversation with the fan who had lost her friend. I remember the feeling I felt in my heart when she shared that he was buried with my photo. That experience, alongside the eye-opening trip to Australia, showed me that no matter what, no one can take your art from you. There is someone out there who needs to hear what you have to say, who wants to see what you have to offer, and whose life will be forever changed by it. So when in doubt, I'm reminded that my purpose doesn't just affect me. It's far reaching and continuously evolving. Standing in my purpose and realizing it also shows me that life is not easy. It demonstrates that happiness is a choice. And in my work as a musician, it's my job to remind people of what joy embodies through the highs and lows. No matter what I've walked through, music creates community and brings us all together. Purpose is the language that's taught me that you will have to leave things behind and that everyone cannot and will not grow with you. It's taught me how to be resilient and relentless. Life is the longest, shortest time. And with that, we should strive to do and be our best even in the face of fear, failure, and finding forever. When you're living your purpose, everything that presents itself is a lesson. We are multifaceted and it's up to us to see ourselves and what we offer the world as valuable. If you're paying attention to your why in life, everything else will unfold in front of you. The stars will align wherever you are. Ho'oponopono, an ancient Hawaiian prayer on forgiveness. I am sorry, please forgive me. Thank you, I love you. What it means to me. I've used this mantra many times in my personal life and continue to hold it close. It reminds me to extend forgiveness to others and myself. It keeps me grounded in gratitude and respect for those around me, even when conflicts arise. This prayer mantra also holds me accountable when I am wrong and makes room for the acknowledgement of the pain I may have caused others. Speaking these words can help heal your karmic imprint and facilitate the necessary healing to move forward. Reader Reflection Think of a moment in your life when you dropped the ball or made a mistake. Write it down or record it on your phone. Then meet it with the forgiveness prayer at the close of your writing or recording. Affirmations for Success Read these out loud in a seated position. I am successful. I can create the life I want. I will work hard to change and grow. I will devote myself to manifesting my dreams daily. What it means to me. Success looks and feels different for everyone. When it comes to my success, I don't equate it with what I have materially, but what I have spiritually. I am a sacred being and recognizing that to me is success. So often we can get stuck on thinking cars, money, notoriety, and extravagant things make us successful. Over the years, I have learned that is false. This affirmation for success is a reminder that we get to create the life we want on all different levels. What is successful to me may not be successful to you, and that's okay. Reader Reflection Write in a journal a list of things that you want in your life and circle the things that you feel will make you feel successful and spiritually rich. Add to this list as often as you need to. Allow it to serve as a reminder that you are in charge of what success looks like in your life. Purpose Meditation. I upload well-being and fulfillment into my heart's drive. I upload my divine desire to stay connected to the source above. I breathe. I'm fulfilled each day by unlocking a new pathway to the source of inspiration. When engaged in my purpose, life becomes easier and less complicated. Well-being and wholeness build inner wealth. Your mind is the true lasting source of happiness. I breathe. I give myself permission to enhance self-esteem and increase self-confidence so that I can fearlessly face difficulties and challenges. I breathe. I upload well-being and fulfillment into my heart's drive. 
I upload my divine desire to stay connected to the source above. I breathe. Affirmations for certainty. Read these out loud in a seated position. I can hold my own. I will choose to be the best version of myself. I am worthy of everything good that comes my way. I can choose where I want my focus to go. I will accept things as they are. I am valuable and no one can take that away from me. What it means to me. Clarity opens the door for self-doubt to leave. I am a big believer in being clear and confident as we navigate our relationships and the world around us. Confidently holding my own has shown me that I am worthy of everything good that comes my way. I can and will choose where I want my focus and energy to go. Acceptance is a part of my process. Trusting that I am valuable and that I bring something beneficial to the spaces I occupy reminds me that I am the master of my life. Reader Reflection What are you sure and clear about in your life? Think about what you'd like to master in your life to live free and in alignment with your highest self. Write a list of these things in your journal. Wow. So (laughs) first off, that first chapter, this first chapter is amazing. And I can't believe that the first chapter has already got me feeling like, man, it took Omarion writing these words for me to feel like, wow, I am successful. I am doing good in life. I am rich. I am wealthy. Even if it's not in a materialistic way that I would sometimes, I will, I would usually like to see myself living in a certain luxurious lifestyle. Reading this chapter made me realize that I'm doing just fine. And this really is great timing for me. I don't know about for you, but for me, this is really great timing because I'm reading this chapter, this book in a time where this has been a very slow couple of months for me. And I talked about this on a show that I have on one of my podcasts. It's called Lex Chat, live on Instagram on Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Lexi ATL on Instagram at Lexi ATL. But I just talked about this on Lex Chat and how, you know, even in this slow moment where I'm not getting booked as frequently as I'm used to and I'm feeling the effects of no longer working with a client who was very consistent with me, even through this time where I'm not getting as consistently paid as I'm used to, and I've lost that relationship and that connection with that person, there's been like a strange, it feels strange to me, but there's been a calm and a peace. Like I'm not making the money that I want to make right now, but there's something telling me that I'll be just fine. I don't need to worry because I've been through a struggle before this is like the same thing, you know? I made it through that struggle. So why should this struggle be any different? And it's really the same. It may feel a little more powerful, a little more scary this time because the stakes are a little bit higher as far as me being in my own home that I own. But the formula, the plan of action against it is the exact same. What did I do back then? I kept moving forward. I kept going. (laughs) One of the most annoying pieces of advice, but it's so good. It's annoying because it's simple. The best piece of advice, the most annoying, simple piece of advice is to literally keep going. And that's how I made it through the slow times in the past. I had to make adjustments where I wasn't living the way that everyone else around me was living, but it really caused me to, you know, I understand how to survive. So if anything should go bad, then I know that I'm good. And the fact that I have experiences, like this is the kind of wealth that's not talked about. The fact that I have experiences that have allowed me to be able to face future challenges, that is wealth in itself. Like wisdom is a form of wealth 
that's not talked about often because everything gets so overshadowed by the materialistic wealth. But what about the spiritual wealth? What about the knowledge-based wealth? We don't talk about those things enough. And those things aren't glorified in social media, honestly. But as far as what Omarion was talking about with purpose, there are just so many things that he's already said in this first chapter. I instantly relate to what he's saying as an artist and some of the experiences and thoughts that he's had as an artist. The most powerful part that I read from him was talking about going from being in a group situation to a solo situation, going from performing in front of thousands of people to going to small intimate nightclubs and going overseas to where people, the reaction that they have to you is not pandemonium. <laughs> See how I inserted that uh, that album title. But the reaction going overseas is not pandemonium like it would have been in the States and how humbling it was to have that. For me, where I am in my artistic journey, I'm starting to get more and more people who recognize me for my creativity and for my artistry, but I'm still in the small nightclubs and the crowds of five to 20 people in very small spaces where the sound system is not all that, you know? I'm still in that stage, but reading that Omarion, someone who has experienced having millions of fans all over the world coming to see you in thousands, performing in stadiums and arenas, for him to come from that going to nightclubs, it kind of like, not necessarily levels the playing field, but it makes me feel like I'm not alone, like it's relatable, like, I'm doing just fine. Someone like Omarion is going back into smaller clubs. I'm starting out in smaller clubs. It really is the same for us all. He's achieved great things, but also like he said, accolades don't make you. It's great to have those experiences, but they don't define who you are. And so already starting out <laughs> this very first chapter called Purpose, amazing, just amazing. And ooh, it's got my heart feeling a certain way. I did my highlights throughout this chapter and I'm excited for what the rest of the book holds. I'll see you next week or whenever the next reading is. This is Lexi. Peace. <laughs>